Good morning. I'm glad you could join us today. We're going through the Stations of the Cross, and I've got Station 10, Jesus is Stripped of His Garments. There are two passages that I'm going to read to us today, and the first one's encouraging. In Luke 22, 41 to 43, we see Jesus praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, and here's what the passage says. Jesus walked away about a stone's throw, and he knelt down and he prayed, Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. And then an angel from heaven appeared and strengthened him. And I love that in this passage, we see Jesus in his humanity, not wanting to suffer and knowing that he would and that he would die. And yet still being willing to follow the Father's will, still being willing to follow the path that God had for him. Here we see God also reaching out and sending an angel to strengthen Jesus where he is. And I think there is a point of ministry here. God has the power to strengthen us even when we are walking through suffering, even when the suffering's not going to be lifted. God has the ability to strengthen us. And so I'm going to invite you to close your eyes, and I'm going to lead us in a prayer and a time of silence where we ask God to send us the strength that we need for the road that he has given us to walk on. So Father, we are grateful that you strengthened your son as he faced his suffering, and we ask that you would strengthen us today. We pray especially for the most vulnerable and weak in our community, in our church and in the city around us and among our friends and family. We lift them up to you and we ask that you would send your strength, God. We pray the same for us, ourselves, and our weakness. Would you meet us and would you give us the strength that we need today? I've had a lot of mixed emotions today. Today I preached to the feedback team, the message that I get to preach for Easter, and I'm really excited to celebrate Easter together. And it also feels so different knowing that we're not gonna be together for the service. We're offering donuts and communion and family fun packs for kids and youth to those who wanna drive in between eight and 10 on Easter Sunday. We're gonna follow safe procedures and distribute those to people using the same methods that Loaves and Fishes is using for their meals being given out. And I'm excited to see those of you who will drive in. But it's not the same this year. It's not the same when we can't get together and throw a party. And so in the middle of even preparing for the greatest celebration of the year, there's still an element of loss at the same time. Jesus endured extreme loss, and he can identify with us. And as we look today at what happened to Jesus as he was stripped of his garments, I think one of the beautiful things about these stations and about this one is that God can identify with the challenges we go through and in many ways endured challenges beyond most of what we've known. Our second passage today is from Luke 23, verses 32. To 38. Two others, both criminals, were led out to be executed with Jesus. When they came to the place called the skull, they nailed him to the cross. And the criminals were also crucified, one on his right and one on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. And the soldiers gambled for his clothes by throwing dice. The crowd watched and the leaders scoffed. He saved others, they said. Let him save himself if he's really God's Messiah, the chosen one. The soldiers mocked him too by offering him a drink of sour wine. They called out to him, if you're the king of the Jews, save yourself. And a sign was fastened over him with these words, the king of the Jews. Jesus was mocked. He was ridiculed. 
He was scorned and he was stripped naked. He endured unimaginable suffering on that day. Jesus hung before the world, bearing all the cost of all the wrong that all of us have ever done. The wrong we've done ourselves and the wrong that's been done to us. Jesus stepped forward and said, I'll pay the price. And this was the price he paid. Jesus accepted his cup of suffering for us, for you, so that you could be free. Because he loves you and he wants to be with you. And he wants to wipe out the cost of anything wrong that you've done or that's been done to you. Know that Christ died for you while you were still far from God. I want to invite you to close your eyes now and imagine that you are with Jesus in his suffering. On several occasions, God has given me really strong pictures or images of Jesus, and on a couple occasions, they've been of him on the cross. A pastor I admire and writer, Tony Campolo, said that he spends five minutes every day just imagining himself at the foot of the cross beneath Jesus, praying, seeing what Jesus gave, and offering himself to God. I invite you to picture yourself with Christ in his suffering and ask yourself, what do you see and what would you say? And I invite you to speak to Jesus now. I'll lead us to start and we'll have some silence to talk to Christ. Jesus, we know that you're alive today and we know that 2000 years ago you suffered unimaginable pain. As you hung on the cross, you did so willingly for the joy set before you, strengthened by the Father for what you would endure. Help us to see you and speak to you now. Amen. As we were praying, I first prayed the Jesus prayer of the Eastern Orthodox Church. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I repeated that several times. And then I asked God, <sighs> I told Jesus I can't live right. I can't get it right all the time. I can't do the right thing all the time. And I actually need him and I need his mercy and I need his sacrifice. And I felt like Jesus is okay with that. And then I felt like Jesus said, what if you let me take the wrongs that have been done to you? And I pictured some of the hardest things that I've dealt with in my life, in the past and in the present. And I pictured Jesus taking those things off of me. And I felt like he was saying, if you'll let me take the wrongs done to you, you'll be able to be free of them. You'll be able to lift them off your shoulders and put them on mine. And today I am grateful for the sacrifice and the suffering of Christ. And today I encourage you. He went through this so that we could be free. 
Friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you and give you his peace now and forevermore. I love you and I miss you and I can't wait to be together again.